the brain. A highly performing system that goes mostly unnoticed in everyday life. So much so, that we only realize how vulnerable this complex biological system is when it fails. To gain a better understanding of what goes wrong in the twists and turns of our brain, scientists are increasingly making use of the tools provided by mathematics and physics. At the Bernstein Center Freiburg, mathematician Stefano Cardinoble and engineer Arvind Kuma study Parkinson's disease. Using mathematical formulas, they describe the altered behavior of nerve cells to understand how Parkinson's develops. Theoretical models, they give us a mathematical framework to understand function of uh, different components which make the bigger brain system. In Germany alone, up to 200,000 people suffer from Parkinson's, in which tremors, muscle rigidity and reduced mobility are just some of the most prominent symptoms. In Parkinson patients, an area located deep in the center of the brain, known as the basal ganglia, shows unusual rhythmic activity. This activity is assumed to be the cause for the patient's problems. It is known that the oscillations occur due to the death of neurons in the basal ganglia that produce the signal transmitter dopamine. But how lack of dopamine creates oscillatory activity has remained unclear. Netzwerke von Nervenzellen bestehen grundsätzlich aus zwei Arten von Neuronen, Ederen und Hemmend, und das alleine führt dazu, dass Schwingungen entstehen können, wenn dazu noch welche Faktoren anwesend sind, zum Beispiel starke Kopplungen zwischen Nervenzellen oder ein starkes Input zu den Populationen von diesen Nervenzellen. Theoretical models to explain the rhythmic neuronal activity have often only considered two regions of the basal ganglia that show these oscillations, while the influence of a third region, the striatum, was mostly ignored. Scientists in Freiburg have now included this region in their mathematical model and found out that, indeed, the striatum has an enormous impact on the emergence of neuronal oscillations. The striatum is the uh, input quelle from the globus pallidus. Und wenn seine Aktivität niedrig ist, dann gibt es keine Schwingungen in diesem Netzwerk. Wenn aber die Striatumaktivität hoch ist, wie im Parkinson, da werden Schwingungsmoden freigesetzt im Netzwerk, während die höhere Aktivität im, im, im Striatum. Pharmaceuticals can strongly alleviate the symptoms of Parkinson's. However, in many patients, after a certain duration, the drugs no longer remain effective. In these cases, Deep brain stimulation can often be the last resort. For this treatment, thin electrodes are implanted into the subthalamic nucleus. High frequency gentle electric pulses are applied. Around 400 surgeries are conducted in Germany each year. For many patients, the oscillatory activity vanishes immediately after the stimulation is switched on, with the result that the patient stops shaking and regains voluntary movement. The battery is placed into the chest or the abdominal cavity. Beyond reconstructing the neurological effects, the model also suggests new ways to improve the stimulation parameters. What we could show is that it's not necessary to stimulate it at high frequency very regularly. In fact, you can skip some pulses in between and that's what we refer to as loose contact meaning you don't always uh, uh, stimulate at regular interval, skip certain pulses, save energy, but the overall effect is still the same, you get rid of oscillations. Importantly, by applying these new parameters, batteries would last longer, meaning that fewer surgeries would be necessary to replace them. As a side effect of the deep brain stimulation, or DBS, some patients experience mild cognitive problems or personality changes beyond just explaining why there are oscillations and how you can get rid of them using DBS. It tries to also explain certain cognitive deficits that appear in Parkinsonian patients after DBS treatment, like impulsivity and uh, uh, compulsive behavior. And now, because the model makes certain suggestions why these uh, problems may be appearing, uh, uh, we are going in the direction of exploring possibilities, how you can avoid those complications in models, of course, and then use those theoretical ideas to develop better DBS protocols 
and hopefully they will uh, reduce the cognitive deficits that are uh, that appear as a side effect of DBS.